So in this video, we're going to learn how to change the data frame itself. So, so far we've been selecting the data frame, filtering the data frame, counting the number of rows and so forth, but we haven't changed the data frame itself. So here's how we change the data frame. We just select something and then we say equal what we want it to be. So let's run this code. So this is the original data frame. So I'm just printing it out so that we see it before the modification. Then we run this code, which sets student to four to 90, and we get this result, okay? So you see that student number four, everything has become 90. Now that's probably not what we meant to do. That's probably not a good idea, but I just wanted to show you that you can set an entire row by just saying, selecting the row and then equaling 90. And so now my DF is going to be this new data frame, okay? So, if we want to change just one item of it, okay, then we have to specify both the row and the column. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to set student three right here, student number three, the score is currently 76 and we're going to set it to 97. So here we set it to 97. Okay, and just remember here that lock here is index based so we are using indexes here like this and this and i lock is integer based right so it'll you specify the number of the row and the number of the column okay so let's go ahead and reset here so we have a clean uh, data set a da clean data frame now we're going to return the third the third row here okay so let's make sure that we've got that right. So it should be uh, the third row, zero, one, two, three, science, 72, C, fair. Okay, remember that it's zero based. Okay, if you wanted to return it as a data frame, we would put the double parentheses around it. And then here, I just wanna show you that the data types are different. This is a series and this is a data frame. If we want to return a range using iLock, we just put the range using the colon there, and we see the range here, two, three, four. This does it to n minus one, okay? Which is different than the behavior of lock, okay? The behavior of lock will include the n. If we want to use iLock to select rows and columns, we do it like this. So here are our rows, two and three, and then columns zero and one. Okay, um, you can also pass a range. This is just another syntax for it, another syntax. So two, four is the same as two comma three and zero, two is the same thing as zero, one. Okay, now here's how to drop rows and columns. So we're gonna redefine our data frame again. If you wanna drop, we use this command drop and we're gonna be dropping one and four, okay? We're gonna be dropping one and four. So let's go ahead and run it, okay? So here you see zero, two, three, and one and four are gone, okay? So this is how to drop rows one and four. This index, okay, is now funny, right? It's no longer making sense, zero, two, and three. We can reset the index in place equals true means that we're going to change the data frame itself as opposed to returning a new data frame. So when we run this, we see that it, all of the data is the same, but we have a new index, zero, one, and two. And here's just the difference between in place equals true and it not being true, okay? So here we run it. And what happens here, we have my DF, this is the original thing. If we drop one, three, and four, we just get zero and two. But you see that when we print out my DF again, it's this original. So when we drop it here, it returns a new data frame. So we have to capture that in a variable if we want to keep it because the original data frame is not changed. Now, if we have in place equals true, it actually modifies this data frame. So let's run it. So this is before we run it. This line of code doesn't return anything. 
pay returns none. So there's no return value. And that's because it's actually changed the data frame itself. So you see the data frame itself now no longer has one, two, one, three, and four. Okay, so we've been talking about dropping rows. Let's drop columns. We'll start off by redefining it so that we have the original code. And then here we see we drop this. And now axis equals one specifies that we're dropping columns, right? Otherwise, it would expect us to be dropping rows. Okay, so here we drop those columns. And so now we're gonna go on to talk about how to filter rows and columns.